In this video, I'll explain vCenter Server 6 and the Platform Services Controller. Now, vCenter is the central management system for vSphere. We could use the vSphere client to connect to individual hosts, but as your environment scales up and becomes larger and larger, that approach can quickly become impractical. So here we see in our slide we have things like ESXi hosts and data stores and virtual machines and virtual switches and virtual data centers and clusters of ESXi hosts. We can manage all of these components from a single session using vCenter. And technically you could run your ESXi hosts without vCenter but there's a number of features that won't be supported if you decide to go that way. vMotion, storage vMotion, high availability, DRS, fault tolerance, and many other features are not supported unless you've deployed a vCenter server. Now we have two options of how we can deploy vCenter. We can deploy it as the vCenter server appliance or as the Windows vCenter server. If we install vCenter on a Windows virtual machine, we're going to install it on top of some supported Windows operating system. To see the latest supported operating systems, take a look at the VMware compatibility guide. Now this requires a Windows operating system license, and because it's on a virtual machine, it can be protected with either high availability or fault tolerance. If we put vCenter on a Windows physical server, that gives us some advantages as well, because now we have physical segmentation of management. Management is completely outside the vSphere environment. Of course, this means we don't get the vSphere protections as well, such as HA and fault tolerance. Our third option is to deploy the vCenter server appliance, which gives you an identical experience when you're using the vSphere web client. You can't tell the difference. It's a pre-configured, pre-built Linux virtual appliance that's designed to run vCenter and it makes installations and upgrades very simple. It can also be protected with high availability or fault tolerance. Now deployment of the vCenter server appliance has been a little slow. The adoption has been a little slow in the past. And the reason for that is because the vCenter server appliance doesn't support SQL databases. And the integrated database with vCenter server appliance didn't use to scale very large. That's changed in vCenter 6. So as of vCenter 6, the Windows version of vCenter still supports SQL, it supports Oracle, and it supports a bundled database as well that can give you up to 20 hosts and 200 virtual machines. The vCenter server appliance still does not support SQL, it only supports Oracle and the embedded vPostgres database. But that embedded database can now support up to 1,000 hosts and 10,000 virtual machines. So it's significantly more scalable than it's been in the past. The other important part of vCenter is the plugins. These are additional features that integrate with vCenter, things like Update Manager, Site Recovery Manager, and vCenter Orchestrator. Okay, so let's talk about the Platform Services Controller and its role. In the past, you could take certain vCenter roles like Single Sign-On, and you could deploy them on a standalone machine. The architecture has now changed with the introduction of the Platform Services Controller. You can still have all of the required services running on a single virtual machine, or you can break it up into multiple virtual machines. Now there are these two functional components of vCenter. We have the vCenter server and the Platform Services Controller. vCenter provides the inventory service, the vSphere web client, and you can also deploy some optional features like ESXi dump collector, syslog collector, and auto deploy. The platform services controller runs single sign-on, the vSphere license service, certificate management, and centralized role management. So the PSC is providing services to our vCenter servers. And these services might be shared by 
multiple vCenter servers, like single sign-on, the vSphere license server, certificate management. Wouldn't it be great if we could manage all of those in one place and share those services across multiple vCenter instances? Now you have a few options of how you can set this up. You can deploy the PSC and vCenter right on the same virtual machine if you want. You're still going to need a Windows virtual machine for Update Manager. Update Manager is still a standalone Windows application. So let's take a look at our first deployment model for vCenter with an embedded platform services controller. The platform services controller provides all those services like single sign-on and certificate management. It can be deployed on its own machine, or as we see here, it can be deployed on the same machine as vCenter. This is applicable with the vCenter server appliance or the Windows version of vCenter. We have an embedded mode available with either of those options. And this model is actually sufficient for most environments, and it's the easiest to deploy and it's the easiest to maintain. So this is an appropriate model if you're not planning on integrating other VMware solutions with single sign-on. And in this model, replication with other platform services controllers is not supported. So if you're going to have a single vCenter instance, this is a great option for you. Now there's a few other options that we're about to take a look at, and these different options can honestly get a little confusing, right? You may be thinking, especially if you're intending on taking the VCP exam, you may be thinking, how am I going to keep all of these options straight? And really the key is to kind of drill these topics over and over again. There are some great practice exams at www.trainertests.com that can help. So at the end of the course, I'll have some information on how you can get access to these outstanding practice exams. Let's take a look at vCenter with an external platform services controller. This is our second deployment option. We can break out the platform services controller as an independent machine. And this configuration allows multiple vCenter servers to link to a shared PSC. This configuration is ideal if multiple vCenter servers need to be linked. So now functions like single sign-on, license management, all the stuff that the PSC can do can be shared across multiple vCenter instances. And again, this is supported on the Windows and vCenter server appliance versions of vCenter. Now here's a scenario where we have multiple platform services controllers deployed. So let's break this down. In this case, you can mix and match embedded and non-embedded vCenter servers. You can mix and match Linux and Windows vCenter servers. In this slide, we see two platform services controllers at a single site, and it's providing us with redundancy. The platform services controllers can replicate key information to each other like single sign-on information. This is referred to as enhanced linked mode. Any of these vCenter servers that are using these platform services controllers will naturally have access to all of these shared services. Now in the middle, we see a load balancer. We need some sort of third-party load balancer to create this highly available environment. It's not actually distributing the workload across the PSCs. The load balancer is just there to facilitate failover if one of those PSCs were to become unavailable. We could also protect vCenter with fault tolerance because fault tolerance with up to four virtual CPUs is now supported in vSphere 6. Here's another scenario where we have multiple platform services controllers, but they're at different locations. Right? On the left, we have New York. On the right, we have Chicago. We have these two independent sites, 
but the platform services controllers are set up to replicate with each other. Under normal circumstances in this scenario, the New York vCenter will use the New York platform services controller. The Chicago vCenter will use the Chicago platform services controller. But the topology here allows for what we call enhanced linked mode. That means we can share single sign-on. We can replicate the functions of the platform services controller across these multiple locations. It's not giving us redundancy, but licensing, permissions, tags, roles, those things can be replicated across both of these sites. To learn more about these concepts and to prepare for your VCP exam, go to www.trainertests.com. These practice exams include this and many other embedded videos. And you can try a free demo. There's a 100% money back guarantee. And it has over 170 questions. And as you answer those questions at the end of the exam, it'll tie them all to the exam blueprint and show you which areas you need to work on. So there's really no better way to prepare for the VCP6 exam than to go to www.trainertests.com and try one of our practice exams.